What is going on guys and happy early Halloween. In this video, I'm going to show you how to wash dirt out of the eye of a leopard gecko. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and a customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. So it's definitely less common, but sometimes EcoEarth, because of how small the particles are, will get stuck in one, or in this case, both of the eyes of your leopard gecko. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to wash this out. Okay, now the quicker you catch your leopard gecko, the faster you will avoid eye infections. Now leopard geckos are very, very resilient against eye infections. I've seen some really bad stuck dirt and even pus build up in the eye. And if you treat it with a vet or treat it by yourself, they're absolutely 100% recoverable. In this case, it's a pretty minor amount of dirt in my opinion, and I believe I can rinse this out no problem. So I'm gonna show you the two-step method to do that. First step, if you buy this from Walmart, Target, Amazon, this is gonna be the best thing to use. It's like sterilized water because the water from your tap has like harsh chemicals, microbes, bacteria, whatever. It's got stuff in it. But once you use all of this up, you can just refill it with regular water and use regular water. And that's what I'm gonna do in this case. So step number one, because this has a very fine point to it, check it out, see that, that drip? I'm gonna use this to shoot it directly in the gecko's eye. So we need to clear both eyes here. So you'll just kind of hold the gecko gently but firmly, squeeze into its eye. It won't really fight too much. It actually likes the fact that you're, that it feels like you're getting it out of its eye. That's not gonna do much. So what you need to do now is turn on the faucet and with a little bit of pressure, let the pressure go into the eye and start washing out the eye. So you can use more or less pressure. It's not gonna hurt the gecko's eye. You could kind of help it by rubbing the eye a little bit and then backing off and like analyzing where it's at. Make sure the gecko can breathe. You know, she just kind of like puffed out a little bit of water out of her nose, so I'm gonna give her a break there. And I'm gonna go back to this thing and literally rinse, wash, repeat the process until eventually you can see her eyeball. That will be the goal. I would even make sure that this is a little bit of a higher pressure so that it can wash the dirt out of her eye and be careful, I'm gonna be careful this time not to get water in her nose. All right, she's squirming a little bit, that's okay. She's starting to open her eye now, so we're gonna keep this process going. We wanna take advantage of this. While the eye is clearing out, we really wanna clear it out. All right, I'm gonna go back to this solution because this solution seems to be working really good because it can shoot right into the eye and also avoid her nose. Get all up in the corners of the eye and all of that. And then I'm gonna run it a little bit lighter and see if I could just shoot it in her eye, avoid her nose. With light pressure, she's going to react to it less. So this is the easier step once it starts to clear. And I'm actually starting to see her eyeball now. I've seen leopard geckos with really, really bad pus and eye infections get taken to the vet and get cured. Our volunteer Brooke, which is Gilbert underscore Gex, G-E-C-K-S, she adopted a leopard gecko that was in terrible condition. Its eyes were like five times puffier from infection and they were able to bring that leopard gecko back to normal with saline eye solutions and I'm not sure what else the vet did. That was a really extreme situation so I would take it to the vet. This is a much more minor situation that you can just handle on your own. And again, it, I would rather turn up the pressure of this a little bit and make the gecko feel a little bit uncomfortable but make sure I get all that dirt out than not do that, you know? And now she's calm again because I think she's starting to realize that it's helping. They do realize when certain things help them. Now let's go back to the saline solution. Both eyes. There we go. Now I know I said that this was a two-step process, but I'm actually gonna add one step that I think is gonna be really good for her that would also be really good for you to do. Okay, she was giving me a little scare there for a second because she was acting a little bit 
lazy, like less motor function. I think she was just shocked from the process. I thought maybe she got water in her nose, but now she's perfectly fine, you know, because if they get water in their nose and into their lungs, they might not be able to get it out as easily as humans do. You know, we could just cough it up and get resuscitated and stuff. I believe reptiles systems a little different. So whenever you're rinsing a reptile, you do want to be careful not to get a lot of water in the nose. That being said, she's back to normal now and look, you can actually see her eyeball and it's starting to look back to normal. Now, that being said, I want to give her one more treatment step. See how she's like holding her water, her head underwater. They usually don't do that when they're like normal. They'll keep their head above water. So I actually had the water a little bit deeper, but for her, I made it more shallow because I don't know why she's acting this way. She's just like, leave me alone. I felt a little bit of breathing in her stomach. That was weird, almost like a gurgle. So we're gonna not put her in water just yet. I really should have been a little bit more careful with the water possibly shooting into her nose. She might just be being a drama queen. Look, I mean like, see, she like, she looks fine. She's even like agitated, like get away from me, fool. So anyway, I would keep the water shoulder high, but because she's acting kind of funny, I'm just gonna make the water a little bit less than shoulder. I mean, she's moving and stuff, but She's just acting weird. It's not normal for a leopard gecko to like rest their head underwater. She might, she might, she's going into shed. She's been agitated. She might, I don't know, but she's fine here. I'm comfortable with leaving her in this level. Water is about knee deep, slightly above knee deep. And I'm going to leave her in here to slosh around, to walk around. See, like she's putting her head right back underwater. Either that or she's thirsty, which is also another possibility or wants to shed or something. But anyway, I'm gonna keep an eye on her. I would normally just leave her in here for like 10 minutes, but I'm gonna keep an eye on her, make sure that her motor skills are good and everything like that. But then when we come back, we might do one more eye rinse or something, depending on what her eyes look like. They're looking pretty good right now. Like I could see her opening them and they look almost back to normal, but I might do like one more of the saline solution eye rinses just for good measure. So see, you can see that she's gonna be sloshing around in the water a little bit. She's gonna be licking her nose, which is wet, licking the water, which is wet, then licking her eye, which is good, because that's how a leopard gecko normally prevents dirt from building up. In this case, the dirt was just too fluffy and it really impacted her. So we're probably going to lessen this amount of dirt. So you see the amount of dirt in here? Somehow she was just really getting it into her eye. You know, sometimes that happens when they dig. So what I'll do is, for me personally, I'll mark her bin with a black clip. And that black clip lets me know to check on her on a more frequent basis. So all of the geckos in our room, they get checked on on a weekly basis. Weekly food, weekly water, weekly cleaning. But if there's a gecko that has a special need, I will, I'll mark it with different clips. So a black clip is like an immediate need. Like something is wrong with this gecko, it's recovering, there's a treatment plan that a, this gecko needs to be on. So every day when I look in my room, I will look for black clips. So like this guy was a little bit of a prolapsed hemipene. It was just a tiny, tiny bit that wouldn't fully go back in. So I've been watching him and now he's perfectly back to normal. So I could actually remove that black clip, but sometimes I'll label it what I was watching. And then the black clip just helps me pick out a gecko out of all of these geckos in this room. Now all of these guys' black clips down here were like black knights that really didn't have that big of an issue, but they were losing a little bit of weight during breeding season and so I removed them from their group and I just wanted to make sure that they were putting back on weight because the black knights are a little bit of a smaller type of gecko when they are pure black knights and so you just want to make sure you're on top of that stuff. So again, I can remove these black clips as well, but that's why there's so many down here, is not that anything's really that wrong with them, it's just I wanted these guys to put back on weight, and I wanted to monitor the weight consistently. Since they are black knights and they are a little bit smaller than an average gecko, it was very important that I keep up with their health plan and making sure that that weight goes right back on. So now this gecko has had a little bit of time. She was saline solution. She was rinsed under the sink. She was given a bath and now she's just stressed out and just wants to go to sleep. But 
I'm probably gonna saline solution her one more time just for good measure. Now leopard geckos naturally get the dirt out of their own eye, so I don't wanna stress her out too much by rinsing and washing her too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave her house with a black clip on it. I'm going to rinse her eye out one more time right now. And just for now, while she's recovering, I'm actually going to take away all the dirt out of her cage. So this is three folded up pieces of paper towel, and I'm just gonna wet that for her humid hide for now until she is a full, full recovery, like 110% and I'm absolutely sure there's nothing to worry about. So that's gonna be the treatment plan for her. So she'll stay black clipped so that I can keep an eye on that. All right, so I just gave her her last saline solution rinse and I believe she's at the point right now where I can just send her back into her cage and then monitor her. So we need a name for this little one. If you guys have name ideas, please drop them in the comments below. Okay guys, what did you think about this video? Have you ever encountered this problem with dirt stuck in the eyes of your leopard gecko? We're constantly learning and adapting and changing to make things better. If I could do something differently about this video, I would absolutely be more careful with water getting in her nose. There was a, a second there, as I showed in the video, where she was breathing a little funny, she might have inhaled a little bit of water, and reptiles getting water out of their lungs is a lot more difficult than humans getting water out of their lungs. You know, we cough and we have mucus and all that stuff, and we have the ability to really launch that out, at least from the minimal research that I've heard in the past about leopard geckos, lungs, and water. So I definitely had a little bit of a scare there that she might have inhaled a little bit too much water. And that was my fault because I'm videotaping and I'm not being 100% careful. So that's something that I would caution you guys on to be 100% careful of when that water's gushing into her face that you accidentally don't get it into her nose as much as possible. They usually hold their breath but I was doing everything so quickly, she I didn't give her enough time to realize what was going on, I don't think. And so just lesson learned, learn it from me so you don't have to learn it for yourself. But that is one thing that I would change about my treatment of her in this video. So again, the three-step process, you're rinsing with the saline solution because that's a fine level of water that's gonna get away some of the dirt. Then you are rinsing with the sink water, which is really going to whoosh through that eye and really take away all that dirt. And then you're gonna end it with a bath. After the bath, I would suggest adding the fourth step of just rinsing with saline solution a little bit more before putting her back in her hide. And then the fifth step, I guess there is five steps, is you're going to remove the eco earth from her hide or peat moss or whatever she's using and let her fully recover before giving her back that loose substrate. This will encourage her to lick her eyes and clean her own eyes and while she's doing that, she's not gonna be getting extra dirt in there. And a matter of fact, that paper towel is damp. She could rub her face on that paper towel and really get that dirt out of her eye if she needs to. It's best to let them do it themselves. I could have sat there for 20 minutes and kept running water under her eyes, but I like to let them do some of it because they're built for this in nature. I mean, they come from the desert, right? So that's usually my health treatment plan is help the animal a little bit, but also let them help themselves because they can do it better and it's gonna be less stressful on them. That's also the same way I treat MBD in leopard geckos. And so you could check out that video here. Oftentimes I will let the leopard gecko help itself out if it's at the point where it can actually eat on its own. I'll just make sure that I supplement it correctly before I make it go through the stress of injecting it with syringes and liquid calcium and all of that kind of stuff. So anyway, you could check out that video here in the top right corner and also feel free to call, text, or message me with any emergencies or questions at 480-299-7657. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a geeky gecko. Great day. Peace.